Shalom, family in the Sahih Shore. Shalom to the worldwide YouTube and social media community. This is your beloved brother Shaul. Yes, I'll come back again with another Shabbat Day Eve message. I'll be reading from the book of First Peter, chapter five, starting at verse eight. First Peter, chapter five, starting at verse eight. Again, First Peter, chapter five, is on verse eight, and I read: Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, and the wrong line, walked about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in the bread that are in the world. I read that to say this, my beloved brethren, in these perilous times, in these hard times, and in the hard time that is coming down the road, we must remain sober and vigilant. By sober, we must remain stable minded. And if we remain stable minded, then we will be able to probably discern the various events that are occurring and be able to navigate through those various events in accordance with the word of Yahweh. So, in order to us to be sober and vigilant, our Yahweh must be firmly anchored in our minds even established in our minds. This requires us to diligently study to show ourselves approved unto Yahweh. That we may be a workman that need not be ashamed right dividing the word of truth. That why we must not neglect the hearing, the reading, the study, and the proper application of the word of Yahweh. Because when we diligently apply the word of Yahweh, then we become sober and vigilant. That we may navigate through and overcome the various trials and traps and snares and pitfalls of the adversary. For our adversary seeks to devour us. He seek to consume us in transgression of Yahweh's word. For the cause we must be sober and vigilant. We must diligently walk according to the word of Yahweh. As it's written in Psalm 91. And verse 1. Psalm 91. And verse 1. He that dwells, or he that abides in the secret place of Yahweh, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So, when we abide in Yahweh's word, we will be under his protection, under his preserving power. So we must abide in the word of Yahweh in these last new days. But in order to abide in the word of Yahweh, in order to be sober and vigilant, you first must have established a covenant relationship with Yahweh. That's why Yahweh sent his son Yeshua Hamashiach to establish a renewed man. That's why we are commanded to believe on Yeshua. To believe on Yeshua is to obey what he has instructed us and to follow his lifestyle. And Yeshua HaMashiach instructed us to be born of water and of the Spirit. And he taught us what is the water, the water baptism in his name. And he taught us what is the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, in order to be born again, you, you must repent of your sins. And you must be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, that you may receive the pardon of sins and the regeneration of your soul. See, the purpose of receiving regeneration 
through water baptism is to receive that renewed nature. And you must receive the baptism of the set up by spirit of the Holy Spirit. And the initial external proof that one receives the Holy Spirit baptism is speaking in another tongue and Yahweh permits one to speak. Once you receive that new birth, you take on the renewed man. You take on Messiah Yeshua. That way, that way you can begin to become sober and vigilant, stable-minded and watchful. That you may be aware. That you may cultivate and properly utilize situational awareness of Shami'in. That you may be able to properly observe your surroundings, observe self, and probably orient yourself to those surroundings. You make the proper decisions, and then you may properly act. They may act accordingly to the word of Yahweh. So, in order for us to survive what's to come, we must be sober, we must be vigilant. And in being sober and vigilant, we will come to understand we must abide steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of Yahweh. No matter what comes upon us, we can never forsake Yahweh's word. For the word of Yahweh is life. The word of Yahweh is health. The word of Yahweh is our fixed point, our firm and unmovable foundation. So in these tough times, these hard times, we must abide in the word of Yahweh. And if we abide in the word of Yahweh, then we will have fellowship with all others who likewise abide in the self-same word of Yahweh. That this is our blessed fellowship. All who abide in the word of Yahweh, who are diligent in obedience to the word of Yahweh, have blessed fellowship with one another. This is our set-apart fellowship. This is what unites us, or ought to unite us, the words of the living El Yahweh. So family, it's time to make your calling and election certain by continuing examining whether you whether or not you're walking according to the word of Yahweh. Examine how were you converted? How were you born again? How you purport to be made a disciple? Did you repent of your sin? Were you baptized in water in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach for the pardon of sin and the regeneration of your soul? Did you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as initially evident by speaking in another tongue as y'all permits one to speak? Are you practicing the fruit of the Spirit? Don't take for granted that you know Yahweh. For those who are of the election will have certain discernment that they not only know Yahweh, but they're walking pleasing unto Him. And they're walking in ones with Him. So family, it's time for us to draw nigh to Yahweh. It's time for us to draw nigh to one another. Time for us to fulfill the timeless and true creed that we must be one another's guardian, one another's keeper. For what's coming down the road will be hard times, difficult times. But Abiyahu has given us power, sound mind. And love for him and for one another to be able to endure. So, family, let us draw nigh to Yahweh. Let us be sober, let us be vigilant. 
knowing that we are not alone in these sufferings that occur because of various trials, tribulations, and persecution. But we who believe in the word of Yahweh, who live according to Yahweh's word, we will experience affliction and adversity. So let us rejoice. Knowing that these trials and tests and snares and traps are mere light afflictions. They are designed to develop us into the image and likeness of Abu Yahweh. That we may be counted worthy of the kingdom of Yahweh to come. Uh, turn to um, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And I read. And Elohim said, Behold, I have given, you no, know, verse 26 rather. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion the over the fish in the sea and over the fire of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created him, male who created he them. This verse, these, this verse is oft misunderstood by many who profess to believe in the Sephiroth scriptures. When the scripture says, when the scripture says, and Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, he was not talking to two other divine beings. He wasn't communicating with two other deities or gods. But the scripture plain says there's no other Elohim, El Elohim with him nor beside him. In fact, the scripture declares that Yahweh alone is creator and the heir of all creation. So, when the scripture said, and Elohim said, let us make man in our image of our likeness, he is counseling with himself. He's speaking with none but himself. And what affirms this point is Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 11. In whom also we have, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his own will. So when the scripture declares that, mm -hmm. let us make man in our image after our life, he always counsels with his own self. He's counted with no other. So, when one attempts to handle the scriptures, one must receive revelation from our Yahweh. For without revelation, without inspiration from Shamaim, one will, be, will not be able to properly study, read, nor preach and teach the scriptures. So, when you handle the scriptures or seek to handle the scriptures, you must be divinely inspired. As is written in the scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh. And it's possible for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction was right. The scripture says again that uh, uh, knowing this verse, there's no prophecy in the script by any by private interpretation. But Sarah, many of all speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, in order to properly understand the scripture, to properly read and teach the scriptures, you must be divinely inspired by Yahweh. So, family, in these times, we must be sober. We must be vigilant. For there are various trials and temptations and persecutions, various snares and traps and pitfalls that seeks 
to detour us from the path that leads to salvation. So when we're sober, when we're stable-minded, when we're watchful, we be able to think we navigate through these various trials and snares and pitfalls and traps of the adversary. So we must remain sober and vigilant. But we have a real adversary in the form of Hillel and his forces of darkness. And mind you, to be sober and vigilant, you first must be rooted and grounded in the word of Yahweh. But to be rooted and grounded in the word of Yahweh, you first must be reconciled with Yahweh. Must be reconciled with Yahweh. Must be reconciled with Yahweh. You must be reconciled with Yahweh. You must be reconciled with Yahweh. So you can't be rooted and grounded with Yahweh without first being a planting of Yahweh. Without first the word being sown into you. So when you receive the word of Yahweh, it's when you are joined unto Yahweh, made one with Yahweh through the new birth. And again, the new birth is the combination of the water baptism in the name of Yeshua Amshir and the baptism of the Holy Spirit as an issue evident by speaking in another tongue and Yahweh is the one speaking. This is the new birth. That's how you're born again. So family, we're commanded to be sober and vigilant. So we're commanded to be sober and vigilant in these last new days. We must be sober and vigilant in these last new days. But like I said, we have traps, snares, pitfalls set by the ass here against us to take us from the path. So uh, I want to exhort and admonish you, stay on that path, family. The path that you sure struck us in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Um, verse 13, rather. You sure struck us to enter you in at the straight gate. We're instructed to enter in at the straight gate, the narrow gate. Enter you at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and brought the way that leads to destruction, and many that we were going thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto light, and few that be to find it. So stay on that straight path, that narrow path. That road less traveled. But this road leads to life eternal. This road leads to rulership with Abba Yahweh. So stay on that path. And this path is the way of perfect obedience unto Yahweh. So remain steadfast in obedience to the word of Yahweh's family. Let's continue to love one another. Let's pray for one another. Support one another when we're weak. Rejoice with one another when, when, when we um, are exalted and when we succeed. And continue to trust in Yahweh. O oh, Yahweh, in the name of your beloved Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, I thank you for your loving kindness, mercy, and uncommon favor showed upon your elect ones throughout this week. Thank you for granting your servant another opportunity and the wisdom and revelation to speak of the word of truth. Thank you for guarding us, sustaining us, and preserving us in the midst of these trying and Difficult and perilous times. Thank you for granting this patience, O Yahweh. 
Thank you for granting us your provision. For opening up the windows of Shami'i. And pouring out your multiplied blessings, favor, wisdom, shalom, and power upon us. Thank you for what you have done among our adversaries. Have you smited them and have sent forth your grievous plagues and curses and great fury upon them, O Yahweh. Thank you for fulfilling your promise to our father Abraham, how that you will judge that nation that held your set apart people, Israel, captive for 40 years. Thank you for you doing, preparing us and pre preparing us for what's to come. Continue to strengthen us. Increase our faith, O Yahweh. Continue to direct our steps in your word. Enlarge our hearts to fear your set apart and most exalted name. Establish your word in our hearts. That we may continue to serve you in spirit and in truth. I thank you. I praise you, O Yahweh. I give your name honor, glory, and praise. So be it. So be it. Shabbat Shalom.